The conflict that we hear about in Afghanistan is, is always around international forces on one side, Al-Qaeda, Taliban, Haqqani network on the other side. But that's certainly happening, but underneath that there's a whole range of other conflicts that Afghans are experiencing um, and that, that have, a, have a really serious impact on stability both within the country and regionally um, around natural resources, around land, around water, around forests, around drugs and around extractives. Um, just to give a couple of examples, all but one of the rivers in Afghanistan flows outside of its borders, all, all the, the, the major rivers. And um, they all flow into other countries that are more water scarce than Afghanistan. And there's really serious issues around uh, the management of transboundary water. Um, there's also, in terms of forests, there's a, there's a very valuable smuggling industry that's, that's developed exporting cedar wood out east from uh, Afghanistan through Pakistan to the Gulf states. The country produces between 90 and 95 percent of the world's heroin and opium, um, and also a large is a large producer of marijuana, and that's helped to add to a, a very valuable um, and destabilizing war economy. So there's a whole range of different issues that even if the, the major war in Afghanistan stopped tomorrow, would continue to cause instability in Afghanistan, and those issues are around natural resources. So Afghanistan has significant opportunities with its natural resources. It's, it has an estimated one to three trillion dollars worth of minerals um, under its soil. It has, um, it has you know, large areas of rangelands, it has um, relatively plentiful supplies of water and so on. The challenge is making sure that those resources are managed well, that the revenues are shared equitably, that they add to development and security rather than undermining um, undermining development. So in terms of, in terms of how the, the government does that, the government really needs to take responsibility over setting in place transparent, equitable, sustainable systems for managing land, for managing forests, um, for managing mineral resources, for addressing things like the drug trade um, and the international community needs to support the Afghan government to do that, to set in place the right policies, the right regulations, the right structures um, and then also to deal with some of the, the larger kind of political issues um, that are happening in Afghanistan around the transition, around the moving of the, the, the withdrawal of international forces out of Afghanistan at the end of, next, end, end of next year. So the international community has been very active in Afghanistan for the last 10 and more years. Um, the international community has spent something like in excess of $500 billion on military action in Afghanistan, in excess of $60 billion on development aid in Afghanistan um, across the 34 provinces of the country. That has led to some notable improvements, um, particularly in the, in the sphere of girls' education, but it's also had a series of problems with it and a series of unintended consequences um, where uh, programmes from the international community have actually helped to cause conflict. For example, road building projects that have led to um, changes in the value of land locally and have actually caused violent conflict between different groups as they fight to control that land or dam building projects that have raised tensions between Afghanistan and some of its neighbours. So there's a whole range of things that the international community needs to do to make sure that the money they spend in Afghanistan actually contributes to, to, to development and security rather than undermining it. And those are really around understanding what's going on, doing a proper kind of conflict analysis, monitoring the way they do their projects and thinking through some of the potential unintended consequences of those projects.